Greetings, dear ones. My name is Drac16, and thank you for joining me for another video. So, um, yeah, it's official. The Leafs have been eliminated from the NHL playoffs. I'm a big hockey fan, and the Toronto Maple Leafs are my favorite team. But honestly, I don't really have any bitterness or anger or resentment towards the Florida Panthers who eliminated the Leafs. I mean, that we made it past the first round for the first time in 19 years. Yes, there was a period of 19 years in which the Leafs did not make it past the first round of the playoffs. But anyways, I'm not going to just make a video about hockey, but yeah, it's, uh, it's unfortunate, but I hope that the Panthers do well in the next round, and I wish them nothing but the best. I hope they do well against Carolina, and hopefully that'll work out for them. But anyways, I wanted to talk today about suffering, and it seems to me that, you know, God is always near to his devotees. You see, when we suffer, he is teaching us a lesson that we need to rely on him to get us through it. So I know that God doesn't enjoy it when we suffer, but it's necessary in this life in order to help us to understand how much we need God. And it's, I think if we're honest with ourselves, it's when we reach our lowest point that we're able to see how much we need God, how much we need his grace, how much we need his mercy and his blessings. So, uh, yeah, and God is always conforming us to the image of Christ. He's always making us more Christ-like. So, the reason why he allows people to fall, he, the reason why he allow his allows his devotees to fall into sin, is because he needs to teach you a lesson to rely on him. You see, when you sin, you're taking it into your own hands. But when you put yourself into God's hands, you really don't need anything else. I mean, you're con. We need to be content with all that God has given us. So, for example, let's say that I, let's say just a hypothetical example. Let's say that I watch some pornography. God allows that to happen in order to teach me a lesson that I need to rely on him to get through sexual temptation. But if you're active in the word of God and you're active in prayer, one experience is almost no desire for sex, for eating, for drinking, or any of the bodily impulses. You really don't need anything else. You see, Christ consciousness is about desiring nothing. And we need to get to a place in which, you know, anyways. So... Yeah, God allows us to fall into sin in order to teach us a lesson. To rely on him alone to get us through these tough spots. Now, I fall into sin because my consciousness of God is incomplete. It's always going to be incomplete. It's a prerequisite as a Christian to admit that you're busted in some way. For me, personally, I'm girl crazy. I, you know, I used to be addicted to pornography. Even though I don't look at it anymore, those images, those thoughts of what I saw are still very strong. They're still very strong. And those impulses, sometimes it can also, it can almost feel like masturbation and pornography is like a compulsion. But even though I don't look at porn anymore, or at least I haven't for a long time, it's been probably about a month or two months, or two and a half months, or something. But you see, God is training the human will to rely on him. And on top of that, God is making you more Christ-like. So even during the roughest spots, like me, 
for me personally, I have depression and psychosis. So these are two mental problems. And uh, I can, even though when I'm in the midst of a depressive episode or a psychotic episode, sometimes I can feel like God is a million miles away from me. But I can look back on those episodes, I can look back on them and realize that God was with me the entire time. In fact, you know, when I'm hearing voices and stuff, I just repeat to myself, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. And that sends the devil running away from me like an Olympic sprinter. <sighs> we need to, in a way, we should thank God for our suffering. We should thank God because he's giving us an opportunity to grow in faith. And any opportunity to grow in our closeness to God is a gift from God. I mean, if that's not, if if granting you the ability to get closer to God is not a blessing, then I don't know what is a blessing. But you see, God's plan is to use the human will and to train us to rely on him. And God knows that we, we're not perfect. God knows that we're going to fall into sin. But he is always willing to forgive us. Even Satan himself could possibly repent of his sins. I mean, I know that he won't, but the option for him is always there. God is more than willing to forgive him if he repents of his sin. But the fact is, he's never going to repent, no matter how much God talks to him and calls him to repentance. The devil will never do that. Not because he can't do that, it's because he has no desire to do it. He hates God. I mean, have you ever wondered why Satan hates you so much? It's because you remind him of God. You are made in the image of God. So, uh, yes, yeah, suffering and stuff is used to train our will. You see, it takes like synchronicity. It's not that... God is going to force you to grow. It's not that God is going to make you, you know, he's going to take the reins 100% and steer you in the direction he always wants. Excuse me. I have the hiccups. Sorry. Um, where was I? Oh, right. Suffering. Yeah, so we should thank God for our suffering. And you know, it says in Isaiah chapter 53 that Jesus was a man of sorrows. A man of sorrows. So he probably had emotional suffering all the time. He may have even suffered from depression. In fact, I would say he probably did have some form of depression because he knew that most of his people would reject him. So the idea that this that Jesus was just kind of a go-with-the-flow type of preacher who was always laughing and singing and prancing down the streets and doing all sorts of, you know, laughter all the time. I mean, I do believe that Jesus had a sense of humor, so it's not like he never laughed. But he was a man of sorrows, according to Isaiah. And so... Um, you know, anyways, uh, sorry that I haven't posted a video in a long time. I've just been having like, you know, like writer's block or something like that. Writer's block is when a writer can't think of any ideas to write about. It's like that, except for video making. I've just been, you know, and it's not like the Lord has told me that I'm not allowed to make videos. It's just that I've had kind of like video makers block in a sense. I've just run out of ideas to make videos. But whatever, it is what it is. I've got some, uh, you know, I've got plans to make more videos, of course. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching my video. And I hope that all of you have a wonderful day. God bless you.